So hello and welcome team. My name is Ryan Robinson. I am the community associate at Altimetric Collider. Um, I guess you all are already familiar that Altimetric is a digital transformation company, or in other words, we help companies stay ahead of the curve in technology and help source innovation amongst their teams. Um, today, I and myself, I mean, I and my teammate, Jacob Smith, the director of the community and the Altimetric Collider, um, we're excited to have our teammate Suhag Ravel, a software engineer at Altimetric, working full time at Ford Motor Company on building scalable, low latency microservices. Um, we are excited to have him here today, and we are going to explore how a platform like Microsoft Azure's Key Vault can give your apps and microservices a platform to manage secrets like database passwords, API access keys, or anything that would be risky to hard code in your code base. Um, so Suhag, if you will, please take it away. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, hello guys, um, my name is Suhag Ravel. I've been with uh, Altimetric for almost three years now. Uh, currently, I'm helping Ford Motor Company to build their cloud native solutions on their electric vehicle platforms. Uh, today, we're going to explore a topic based on uh, managing application secrets in the cloud. This is kind of like a sensitive topic that I want to cover here. Uh, whether you are a developer or a system admin professional, you need to make sure that uh, you have a right tool and choice to uh, keep your environment secure. Application uh, need to access the configuration data in place, operate correctly. And then while most configuration data is non-sensitive, some needs to be remain confidential. Uh, and these strings are like known as a secrets. Well, if you're building a reliable ap application, the chances are that your uh, functions require to access secrets or any other types of sensitive information you're keeping. These secrets can, can be like API keys, uh, database credentials, encryption keys, certificates, sensitive configuration settings like email address, username, debug flags, or et cetera. And also not to forget password. Um, there are plenty of options available in the market that you can currently leverage as a tool uh, and integrate it within a system. One of the options that we, that have, that we have is Vault. Uh, it's provided by HashiGrop. Uh, it's an open source tool that, that you can leverage. Uh, another option that we have is AWS Secret Manager. Uh, if your apps is, is in Azure uh, uh, AWS, then you can leverage the secret manager for that. And last but not least is Azure Key Vault. Um, it, uh, you can leverage Azure Key, Key Vault to store your secrets and, uh, instead of hard coding within your, uh, within your code base uh, to uh, increase the maximum security and um, add confidentiality within your application. So to that note, uh, let's, let, let's move forward. Um, the, the, why, one of the main reasons that, that we want to use any type of tools like Azure Key Vault is we want to have a centralized application, centralized place to um, uh, use and access all the secrets, can, which can be um, passwords or API keys or database, uh, database connection strings or something like that. So instead of uh, keeping, uh, keeping track of all the secrets within your application, you would have a uh, centralized place where you can update, manage uh, all the secrets and credentials and certificates within your system. Uh, secondly, uh, yeah, of course, uh, you will have a, a proper monitorized access uh, of those secrets and values, secrets values where you will have, you, you can establish different access policies, whether who would who, who can access those secrets or uh, or which applications or which person can, uh, can update those secrets or I'm managing read write policies based on those secrets. Um, uh, another point which can, which can uh, you can cover is um, you can monitor who accessed the secret. For example, if you have given access to person X, Y, and Z or app application one, two, or three, uh, you can make sure that which application is uh, requesting which type of secrets and have a proper track of it. Uh, and, up, uh, and you can also uh, uh, have some administrative policies around those secrets and certificates. Um, and last but not least, if your application uh, using, is using different uh, uh, Azure services, then you can also integrate this particular key vault with those Azure services to, to make sure that you know, your app is properly secure. 
So Azure Key Vault is a cloud service managed, uh, used to manage keys, secrets, and certificates. Key Vault basically eliminates needs to develop or to store security information in their code and allows you to centralize the storage of your application secrets without greater, greatly reduce chances of secrets when maybe leak. You know, in addition, it also provides logs. You know, uh, all access and uses uh, usage attempts of your secrets, so you have a complete audit trail for your compliances. So, like I said, you know. Azure provides three types of secret management. First, uh, secrets management, which is nothing but uh, it can be a, uh, some API keys, database strings, or it can be some access keys or pass simple pass password, etc. Second is key management, uh, but key is can key can be nothing but like some sort of um, some sort of um, encryption keys or decryption keys or even JWT access token, uh, which we use basically to access. Uh, any resources, uh, but third and uh, third is uh, certificate management. So you can also install, like create or remove certificate uh, from um, Azure Key Vault, where you simply uh, import certificate, or even if you want to, if you want to create a new one, you can do it, and also uh, you can run access to certificate in order to uh, in order to uh, provide proper uh, SSL and TLS security, which used with Azure and internal connected resources. Um, to add note, let me let, let me explain you the authentication flow, how Azure Key Vault works internally within the system. So currently, we have like, for example, or currently, if your application is um, uh, is deployed on some places, or even if you are accessing your application locally, you would uh, basically uh, you'll basically have a specific library, which is a uh, specific Key Vault library, where you can access. Uh, where you can provide uh, access to that particular app and simply uh, access all the uh, secrets from the key wall. Uh, first of all, the flow, uh, the the whole authentication flow is is worked on is working on uh, Active Directory authentication. It's one of the way where uh, it's one of the uh, way of doing Microsoft uh, authentication where you can simply uh, create a Microsoft account or you can create a Microsoft uh, app within uh, Azure and then provide uh, create an access policy around it. So whenever your app is trying to access secrets, it first of all uh, authenticate with the Active Directory uh, application, uh, and then uh, it will go to particular key wall and request a specific key that you are requesting. And based on if your application credential is valid, um, then key wall will basically verify those credentials with the Active Directory authentication server and simply provide you the secrets back. And it's, it, it internally, it's simple a get request uh, where you can also have uh, security policies and security uh, security policy and access policies created around it, and have uh, a proper authorization flow in, in 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 place. So all of your secrets are not being exposed by any uh, on your code base, and have um, proper policies around it. So with that note, let's let's go to a really quick demo. Um, uh, so just give me a minute. All right. So currently, uh, we can uh, if you're using uh, if you're if you're performing any microservices based authentication, or if you're using um, Spring as an uh, Spring as a framework to create us uh, microservices, uh, we can simply uh, we can simply go to start.spring.io and create a simple demo project. You would need a uh, you would need a, a couple of libraries in order to get started with Spring Boot, which is nothing but Key Vault, Azure Key Vault, right? So let's generate this uh, this project. Meanwhile, this project project is being generated. Let's go ahead and explore what what we have to offer in uh, in Key Vault. So first of all, uh, it's, it's required to have you. It's, it's required to have you uh, an Azure account. Uh, currently, Azure just provides you uh, free two hundred dollar credit if you sign up in your account. Uh, so the first piece that we have is is nothing but your client application, uh, uh, which is nothing uh, which which very basically where uh, you would have your code uh, actual code base, uh, and then you would also have an Azure Active Directory authentication, which is responsible for authenticate whatever secrets that you have in order to access that secret is is valid or not, and then you'll have an of course Azure Firewall uh, configuration where you basically say, uh, specify that. Whether this IP that you have, whether it's the correct IP or not, allow whitelisted IP or not, and those kind of firewall, you can set up those kind of firewall rules, and then you can simply go to Azure Key Vault. Um, if all of the security is 
good. And then the request will be made to Azure Key Vault. And then Azure Key Vault also will make sure that whatever credential that is coming with will also make sure with um, activity authentication. It has a token, um, whether it has a valid token or not. And then it will return an access token. And also, it also returns um, uh, proper secrets which you, are, which you are requesting. So here you would get a uh, different sorts of subscriptions where you can simply mention which subscription you belongs to. Uh, and then you would need to access a resource group, uh, a specific resource group that you wanna create. Uh, it can be a uh, resource, group, resource group can be something where, where, where you basically make sure that um, whether it's a product resource group or a pre-product resource, resource group, and based on that, you will have a proper access policy around the resource that you're creating on top of your Azure. And simple, for example, let's say uh, we have a uh, resource group call your resource group, right? And then we can have a proper X policy uh, around it. Uh, simply uh, X policies can be something, um, it's access policy can be something of like, you wanna request access to a specific user user, or you wanna access uh, proper provide access policies around a specific uh, application in Azure or um, uh, those kind of stuff that you can configure here. And then simply you have to go ahead and review and create access group. Uh, it currently it's not allowing me to create access group because of some configuration that I have currently in my account. But once you create those policies, once you create those resource group, and then you can simply add um, sim simply add uh, credentials within Key Vault, and then in the after that after that step, uh, you what you can do is um, we can simply have our Key Vault uh, demo Key Vault applications. Let's for example, let's say we have just downloaded an application from Spring Initializer. That was the first step that we did. And this is the application that, that we have right now. So in order to, after you, after, after you create your key vault, you, you can simply insert those secrets within the key vault, and then you can simply access the secrets using this value, value annotation that we have in Spring. And um, after that, those, the, the value annotation will basically go ahead and uh, get the secrets value from the key vault and, get, and, print, the, and print the secrets here within the system. Uh, First of all, uh, the information that you need in order to access those secrets will be nothing but uh, actual your client ID and secrets information from Azure Active Directory. This is something that you can get from whenever you create an access, whenever you create an Active Directory, Active Directory within your Azure, and you would specifically generate a client key, which is uh, which which can be valid for one year or or six months based on your policy around it. And after you create a key vault in Azure, you will get a URI which is responsible for accessing that particular resource uh, in Key Vault. And this is the, these are the main information that you need. And then you can simply create secrets within your Key Vault. Uh, based, on current, based on my current access policy, I, I, I don't have a proper account to create those secrets right now, but uh, based on what we have right now is we can simply create a name or uh, we can simply create a secrets, whatever you create in your configuration file in your key vault and then simply uh, access it here within your application. Uh, and, pro, uh, and also you can also monitor those secrets uh, within, uh, within the applications itself. And also you can go to Azure and monitor those secrets. So uh, that's all I have for you guys uh, to uh, how we can manage secrets in Azure. Um, is there any question that you have? Uh, Ryan or any audio, anyone from audience? No questions currently posted, but curious. Oh, here's one popping in. Oops, sorry. Great question, Adam. So he said, I see how Key Vault helps to keep secret information out of the code base, but does Key Vault help protect the secrets in any way if there is a breach of Azure or PCF accounts? So for that, um, Breach of Azure. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what kind of breach that you're talking about? You want to just explain that directly, Adam? Yeah, just if someone somehow gets access to the Azure account, does the Key Vault still protect the secrets? If some, yeah, if if someone gets uh, gets into your Azure account, if the if 
the key vault owner doesn't have uh, uh, doesn't add you as an access pol like doesn't add you under the access policies, then you they, the person won't have um, access to the key vault. So that doesn't necessarily mean that if you have an Azure account and if you know that secrets, then like uh, key vault, then you would have then you would have a specific uh, access policy around it. So it's not like uh, if you're on Azure, then you will have access to all the key vaults. You have to be a part of, uh, you, you have to be, owner, the owner of the key vault must have to add you under uh, under the key vault access policies. And that's one of the main benefit that key vault provides where uh, you cannot really, uh, not, not, a random, not not everyone can have access, have access to the particular key vault, but um, the key vault administration can decide that who would wanna have access. Uh, one important thing which I want to cover here is uh, like secret rotation. Um, is uh, sec secrets are something that we that that we basically will expire after certain days or certain months. Uh, and Azure does provide uh, if your application is totally hosted on top of Azure, then you can use uh, another policies from uh, another service from Azure called um, Event Grip, or uh, which is basically allows you to. Uh, rotate your secrets in a in a way that you will have a zero downtime. So there is something uh, definitely uh, in, there is something definitely that Azure provides that you know uh, you, your application will have zero downtime with the new secrets that you have. Cool. Another great question here. Are there any performance implications of using Key Vault? Uh, so, for example, a specific baked-in delay that you would need to account for in in the architecture. So, uh, basically, you can also you can always mention you can always monitor how 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 is your keyword behaving. So, whenever uh, whenever you create a keyword, uh, Azure doesn't give you an options to choose a location where where is your application hosted. But based on um, based on Based on request, it's getting it basically will cache the key walls key walls value within the nearby 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 region, and uh, it will basically give you uh, the minimum latency for that to access that particular key wall. But yeah, you can always uh, uh, key wall give you a platform to monitor those those numbers that you require to have uh, that that you require to know that prior to deploying your application in PR, in, in a specific environment. So if you know that, okay. Um, it is basically it's taking me 300 milliseconds to access this particular that particular resource. Uh, then you will uh, you, then you can account for it. Great. And another great question from Praveen here: Does Azure Key Vault does a Key Vault provide secrets mitigation migration? Excuse me. Does it provide secrets migration when moving to a different platform like AWS? So currently, it, it does not provide anything like. Uh, if you are, uh, if you are, if you want to move from one premises to another, it doesn't provide anything because the whole access. Uh, because if you if it does, then it has it has to integrate all the access policies between uh, Azure and AWS. So if you, my best bet, my best bet would be to export all the key. Uh, if if you have in a situation like that, then you know in order to do that, you have to export all the secrets from Azure and manually enter into AWS. So I have a follow up there. So how about for a team that is maybe using multiple cloud platforms? Is it possible to, to have it work between cloud platforms simultaneously? Yeah, it, it, it's totally possible. So what you need to do in order to achieve those kind of complexity, uh, even if those, regardless of if you have a different cloud platform or like you, if you want, if you have different clients, uh, what you can do is you can create simply a different apps in Azure, treating each app as a different pl cloud pl platform and have a, have a key vault, have a proper access policies around key vault, where you would, for example, you would give cloud platform one, a proper access policy for, given, for a specific key vault, cloud platform two, a specific policy. So you can always treat, so you don't have to be fully on Azure in order to uh, start with key vault. You can just have a you can just have an Azure account, and then you can just have you can just simply uh, create a key vault and Azure app. So those two are important things. You don't need to deploy on top on top of Azure. Got it. Uh, so question here: Would it make sense to use Key Vault for information that isn't necessarily secure? 
Uh, so for things like applications, uh, uh, was that configuration settings? Yep. Um, or is it for yeah. things like API credentials? Yep. So like I was saying, right uh, here uh, for, um, it does provide three types of secret management. One is secret, second is key, and third is key certificate. So you can treat secret, uh, you can add secrets, or you, if you some, if there is something, some sort of flag or some sort of configuration that that is that you want to make sure that uh, there is that that no, not everyone have access to. You can put always put it into a secrets and uh, have proper access policies around it. That's cool. Got it. Any other questions, anybody? This is awesome information. Um, and Suha, I, you were mentioning before we before the talk started that um, that you know about other platforms for for managing uh, secret data like this. Um, could you just speak at a high level, like what other um, and I apologize if you already covered that, but what other types sure. of tools uh, are available that, that folks could look into? Definitely. So first of the two, uh, if you if if you don't want to go with uh, Azure Key Vault, you can always go for another call, open source tool called Vault. Uh, and there's an organization called HashiCorp, which is basically trying to uh, trying to uh, like basically does provide official support for uh, Vault. So if you if, uh, you can always integrate Vault within a specific software and uh, have instead of uh, instead of using Key Vault, you can have Vault uh, set up for for your application locally. But definitely, you would need some sort of cloud where you can deploy that Vault and then uh, have a proper secret mechanism. And there's also AWS Identity Management System, which is also another option if your application is on top of uh, AWS. Uh, but here at Ford, uh, we are we are working. All, our, all of our application currently is in uh, in Azure, and this is the best option that we can go with. Azure also supports Vault on top of it. So if you want, if you're interested in like, if you if you are so in, interested in, in in not using Key Vault but having uh, having a little bit more control around uh, whatever code base uh, which is responsible for managing your secrets, because currently even if you're uh, even if you have deploying your or publishing your secrets in Azure, Azure is owning those secrets. So if you if you want one la one layer more of privacy, you can always deploy a vault on top of Azure or any cloud provider, uh, and then have proper uh, X policies around it. What scale would you say is is necessary to to kind of justify a system like this um, versus a, another? more like manual uh, management system. Um, so for, for a smaller team that's managing with, with maybe more basic cloud services or something, um, is there kind of a point at which the, the data becomes cumbersome enough that, that a solution like this is necessary? Um, it's always, uh, if, if, even if, whether it's, it's a small team or large team, if, you're, if, if your application is being used by an end, end user, uh, simple information like databases, databases, uh, database URL, client credentials. You really don't want to hard code in your code base, right? So, regardless of whether you are you are going with a small team or big team, you would definitely need to find a tool or a platform which will uh, does this uh, secret management for you. Or you can build up one for yourself. You can simply create a simple simple uh, encryptor or decryptor within your code base and provide secrets at runtime. So there are always different ways of doing things. Uh, I would def if if the team is small and they are not interested in investing on Azure, they can always go for Vault. Uh, since Vault is an open source platform, uh, uh, you, there is not in a there is not enough uh, support available. If you need support, then you can always reach out to HashiCorp organization, which does provide support on top of your Vault. I will also share some couple of links for you guys after uh, this uh, session uh, uh, with Vault and also uh, AWS Identity Manager, which, uh, which does a similar kind of work uh, in a different way. What what like level of security does this cover? Um, like if a company, if there was a financial services provider or something, you know, that's something that required, I, I suppose Ford probably does require a very high level of security, but but how how secure is it from an encryption standpoint? So uh, 
secure 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 information can be anything right like uh, whatever security like whatever information that you are storing on top of uh, like uh, under keyword uh, keyword if you don't have access to that keyword if you don't have proper access policies around that particular that particular secret that is stored being stored on a keyword in that case you won't uh, you won't able to see it so keyword like the values are is, is stored on top of azure in, a, in, a, in an encrypted way and, and you can only decrypt it if you have proper access policies around it got it got it and yeah uh, azure also provides uh, you can also there are different uh, tools that are available for example uh, currently uh, there, there are different client libraries that can use uh, Azure CLI, PowerShell, if your code is in on top of .NET or Node.js or even Python, you know, and of course Java. So there are client libraries available right now in the market where you, uh, on, on the platform where you can simply download it and have, uh, just like I mentioned here, do this credential study uh, and uh, simply you can access those uh, uh, resources. So you don't need to write uh, a really hard coded code to access these resources. Like I was mentioning in Spring, you can simply just use value annotation. If, you're, you, if you don't want to use a Spring framework, then you can have a Azure uh, Java client library, which, uh, which in, in, the, in, in which case you have to do all the step, authentication, receive a token, get secret token. Um, and this will be covered by like Azure Key Vault to Azure Active Directory will be covered by um, Azure itself, but you have to do step one, two, and three, and uh, one, two, and three. But if you're using any framework like Spring, all you have to do is configure those parameters within your application or config file, uh, and simply uh, use value annotation in order to access those key walls. And framework will do that for you. Awesome. Anybody have any other questions? I know we're... Uh... Squeaking in the lunch hour here, so we appreciate everybody joining us. We'll give, we'll give you a couple more minutes to think about it. Um, in the meantime, Suha, I'm curious if there's just any other thoughts you wanted to to share uh, while we're together. Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, like like you were man, like you were saying that this is not the only option that we have right now. But uh, if regardless if it is your small team or big team, uh, you would always need uh, some sort of uh, secret management software or library, which does all this work for you. So one of the options is Key Vault right now is, uh, is available or you can use well Vault. But yeah, that will be, this is how I would like to con conclude it. And yeah, feel free to ask questions if you have any. And yeah, of course you can just go to uh, the resource like Key Vault, you know, in order to uh, get more information. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, Suha. With that said, that concludes our discussion, Managing Secrets in the Cloud with Suha Ravel. Um, Suha, once again, we thank you so much for sharing such awesome expertise and knowledge per usual coming from our Altimetric team um, and teaming up with you all and you has been a pleasure in particular, but um, yeah, we just continue to look forward to more talks like these. Um, everyone, we will be posting this video on our YouTube channel, and we strongly encourage everyone to follow us, connect with us, tune in for more events in the future. Um, yeah, so thank you all for coming. Uh, we will follow up via email with a post-event survey, as well as our YouTube link. Um, so the Altimetric Collider team thanks everyone for taking the time out of your day to hang and learn out and learn with us. And have a great afternoon, everyone.